We're in the Health Education Center. This is the newest building on campus. It actually increases in acuity as you go from the first floor to the fifth floor. So we're on the fifth floor now, and we're in a 10-bed ICU uh, that has two room adjoining OR suite. So in this environment, the students can practice anything and everything that they would see in a hospital setting, taking care of patients that are on life support, primarily adults in this unit, uh, but we do have the capacity to bring up infants and uh, small children that are simulators to simulate those activities. So the students uh, are getting ready to start their first critical care rotation. They've spent last summer in the hospital just starting to work on acute care and now they're going to move into an ICU setting. So with 10 ICU beds and 10 human patient simulators that we can attach to life support, students get to practice those skills in a no harm, no foul area. The stress is still there. It's the stresses that they would feel in a hospital setting, but again, uh, they have the ability to make errors, make mistakes, and learn from those mistakes before uh, actual patients are compromised by them. So today we are actually looking at uh, their review. In the summer, they spent time learning about mechanical ventilators. They learned different modes. Uh, they weren't necessarily put onto a patient. So now we've connected them to a patient and they actually will have to deal with a patient that's on life support. And we're gonna get them to work through different emergent situations that would pop up. So could they handle those emergencies? Could they handle the routine care of a patient on mechanical ventilation? So those are the skill sets that we're gonna be doing. Because next week, they actually move into an actual ICU setting where they'll see that for real. Because the things that we do you know, post-COVID, we did pre-COVID. I think the things that have changed is really, in some areas, the uh, importance of what it, these students bring to the healthcare team. A lot of hospitals already knew that, knew that the respiratory therapists in a critical care environment played a very critical role. But in other hospitals where maybe they didn't have the volume, they hadn't seen that before. So I think that that's one of the things that the training and the things that our students do uh, get brought to bedside. Uh, they are doing the things that they did before, but I think people are just a little bit more aware of it because of the volume of patients that we have in ICUs because of COVID. I came to UTMB in 2007 and I actually was out of respiratory therapy. I wasn't gonna do it again. The thing that brought me back was an experience that I had with my own son who was on life support and spent the last 14 days of his life on life support. And I saw the training of therapists that had happened because these were the people that were taking care of my son. I saw some good therapists and I saw some that probably needed a little bit more training. And it was that experience that brought me back to respiratory therapy. I think I need to be part of the training of the next generation of therapists. So one, that they are cognizant of the needs of their patients, that they are well-trained in the delivery of that care, but then they are also well-trained to deal with the family who are at their bedside. Because I, as a respiratory therapist, spent the last 14 days of my son's life with him at the bedside, but I wasn't necessarily providing that care. Uh, I actually got to see the folks that were providing that care. I want those people to be well-trained.